Hello and welcome to With Wellner Anderson. This is a channel where we talk about financial, we talk about, uh, we talk about things that are business, we talk about things that are historical, and we try to put it in simple terms. Today we're going to be talking about the history of the gentrification of Chicago. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. This video series is a little bit different from what you might see on gentrification because my goal is to one, to get you to identify what gentrification is, to know how gentrification occurs, and to understand how Chicago get, got gentrified. Then after that, you can go on and look at other videos to show you what were the impacts of gentrification. Well, well, what is gentrification? Gentrification is when one class of people replaces another class of people. Typically, it's a uh, low economic level group of people being replaced by an artsians group or another group that has a little bit more money. Now, how the term become a term? It was coined by a lady named Ruth Glass in London when she was asked to do a survey. And that's where the term gentrification came. It was in 1964. Um, the term gendify is really comes from gentry, which is a French term which described the middle class in between the upper class, the aristocracy, and the, uh, the, the, the lower class individuals. So that's where the term comes from. Okay, the tools that they use to gentrify, there's redlining. This was pretty prominent. It stopped in around the 1970s, but it ran pretty rampant. And what that did, it, the federal government played an active role at restricting uh, loans to people. And they simply redlined areas and they were not loaning that area. And that, of course, produced reductions of services, police, fire, and education, and sanitation, a rise in crime. Also, it happened, another tool that was used to gentrify was restrictive covenants. And you might even, if you're a homeowner, you might want to look at your lease and you might see that there is a restrictive covenants on your lease, although they're not active anymore. What that did was that said you can only sell your house or rent to a certain, or you cannot sell or rent to a certain individual. There's also th something called the rent gap theory. The rent gap theory is when it simply becomes more beneficial to sell your house because your taxes are so high. Now, there's also eminent domain, but one of the things I want to talk about um, at a little length is zoning. It's better known to as urban planning. This is a tool that is still very much active today. Um, it is, it is, towns use uh, planning or urban planning or, or zoning as a tool to keep out minorities. So that, that's a tool that's still active. Let's talk, let's go back to a little bit about Chicago, the early history. It was incorporated in 1830. It had access to the Great Lakes, which was amazing and uh, eventually had access to the Mississippi River system, which is probably the most vast river system in the world. Chicago in 1900 actually reversed the flow of the river, of the Chicago River, to get access to it, to the river system. And I think that happened in 1826, they had access when, or say 1826, the Erie Canal, became accessible to Chicago. So Chicago really was a sleepy city. It became a major city. It went from a population of 1837, in 1837 of 4,000 to 1880, a population of half a million, over half a million, to 1850 as being the fastest growing city in the world, Chicago was. The railroads, and when they laid railroads out, Chicago we essentially located. They also laid out telegraphs to parallel that, parallel that, which gave, made Chicago communications hubs at the same time. Ironically, the, strong, the tallest buildings in Chicago at that time were grain shafts, where they had grain elevators. That's how much business Chicago did in grain and in timber. Um, uh, they were the industry skyscrapers. They were like 15 stories tall, so Chicago was doing very well. The early immigrants were uh, from the, from uh, were from Ireland, Poland, Germany, um, Ukraine, the Ukraine, and they came because again there was an opportunity. And the meat processing industry 
just became huge from Chicago being centrally located. They used to process close to between eight and 10,000 pigs and cows a day and ship that out throughout the nation. In 1862, the land, the land grants were, were, were allowed by the U.S. government and it did not allow, obviously, the slaves to access to it, but it did not allow a lot of the free blacks access to moving west and getting lands. In 1871, there was Chicago fire that brought opportunity again for people to come to rebuild the city. And that was, uh, that was in 1873, they, they finished it. If you look at the early south side of Chicago, it was mainly stockyards, industry, steel mills, and a very high density population. Initially, it was Irish, Polish, German, Ukrainians, as I said before, and some African Americans and Mexicans. It was the home of the Pullman Car Company, which was a huge company. And when you get to about 1919, it was the end of the First War. And during the war, a lot of blacks had come north to fill the jobs that a lot of the white servicemen had had prior to the war, but they were returning in 1919. There was not enough, enough housing for the people and uh, the housing situation came down to what is known as Red Summer, which where there were race riots throughout the entire United States. In Chicago, they had their, uh, I would say, their Harlem, it was called Brownsville, Brownsville, excuse me. Um, it was a huge seven mile strip. Uh, there was about 300,000 black people there. It was very prosperous. Um, now I believe that was where the Robert Taylor houses were built. But Chicago was called the black metropolis. In 1936, the Federal Highway Act came, and that boiled on what is called transit-oriented gentrification, where what happened was areas were totally decimated by, uh, by building out transit. In 1936, the Federal, the federal uh, FHA, uh, the Federal, federal Housing, Housing Act came out, and that gave opportunity for the first time for people to have a 30-year mortgage. Um, and 30-year mortgages, mortgages before that time were not in any case handled in over 30 years. They were usually paid in 15 years in lump sums. Black people again were left out of that situation. They did not get an opportunity to get that much in FHA loans. Um, matter of fact, the entire Alphabet City, Alphabet uh, city or words that were produced during the New Deal, um, blacks didn't really benefit from the the NRA. They actually called the the Negro runaround. That's how bad it was. But they ain't getting moving on. In 1934, uh, 1944, the slum clearance or urban renewal, eminent domain, the government which was taking land and 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 and, and calling it slums and and rebuilding on top of that. The GI Bill came along. Again, a lot of blacks were, most blacks were not able to take advantage of it. In the 1957 Federal Highway Act, that totally decimated neighborhoods completely. Now, I'm just gonna talk for a moment about something called shovel ready really quickly. What happens is the government, when the government starts handing out uh, money to build something, highways, let's say, for example, they tend to pay for 90% of the funds and leave the 10% up to locality to pay. But what happens is the locality also has the right to build out the way they want to build it. So a lot of times what happens is the local powers will then use that right to use that toward bringing on the devastation of minority communities. So that, that's a lot of things, that, that's one tool that they uh, used. As you move on, you're going to see in the 1970s, it was general urban neglect. Chicago got hit by it. Um, the 1980 recession and the Reagan tax cuts really hurt the city. And, and that brings us to the 2008 financial crisis, which really hurt Chicago. 
now let's talk about a couple of areas you might want to look at. Um, there's Chinatown, which is actually doing well against gentrification. Hyde Park, Pullman, um, Beverly, and uh, a place in Chicago, uh, in, uh, an area in Chicago named Englewood that you might want to look at to see how it's been gentrified. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Again, if you enjoyed the video or got something out of it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a great day.